Hello everyone. So, in the last video, I had promised to create a walkthrough on all diffusion AI model for changing clothes, how to install it and how to run it in Comfy UI. This is the Hugging Face page. Now they have this demo page on their Hugging Space and you can try it out using their demo with preset model image and clothing image. You can see different people wearing different styles of clothing here. But basically, the image data they've used has been fine-tuned specifically for Odd Diffusion because I found that after testing it, some poses and angles of the AI can't generate good clothing demo outputs. So I just want to test out some angles and poses which you may need to avoid when using OOT Diffusion to generate your e-commerce clothing demo images. Or if you want to use the IP adapter workflow that I covered previously, you can try that out too. The link is in the description below. You can watch that video as well and try running things both ways, testing which one works best for your use case. You know, sometimes there's a difference in which poses or model angles don't work as well in OAT Diffusion. By the way, here is one of the AI friend in Discord who is really doing e-commerce business and used the workflow created in the last video for his product images. It looks amazing. Glad this really helped and make things in production. Anyhow, back to this tutorial. Like this one, we have a tight t-shirt and a black t-shirt in the picture. The model doesn't do really well with those, as I can see. The lower part of the t-shirt is tucked into the pants, and this isn't the style of how a loosely fitted t-shirt would drape, right? If you're wearing a fitted style t-shirt like that, then sure, it's okay to tuck it into the pants. But there are some pros and cons with this auto diffusion. So I'll demonstrate some bad examples, especially ones to avoid when running this AI model. The first thing you need to do is come to this auto diffusion models GitHub page. It's called Confui OT Diffusion. Scroll down here and you'll see the instructions in both English and Chinese. The workflow is pretty straightforward. You load the OT Diffusion model from GitHub as a custom node, create another custom node called the OT Diffusion Generate node, and then connect your model image and clothing image. It will generate the output for you. So let's go through the setup instructions here. We're going to first create a Conda virtual environment and install everything step by step. But before that, you have to scroll down to this part. You need to install the NVIDIA CUDA library. You also have to go to the Visual Studio installer and install the plugin for your Windows SDK. Also, you need to download the NVIDIA Toolkit 12.4 from here. Click on Windows if you're on Windows and then download the corresponding version for your PC. Back to Oot Diffusion GitHub, scroll down a bit on this page and you'll see the Visual Studio Installer section. The author has provided screenshots showing which tools you need to install in Visual Studio. Basically, that's the C++ component and .NET Framework component. And if you scroll down further, you can see there's a Windows SDK listed. Let's zoom in to this picture. And you can see we need the C++ component and the Windows SDK. If you have Windows 11, of course, you'll need to install the Windows 11 SDK instead. And for my OS, I am selecting Windows 10 SDK. Come back up to the GitHub page instructions. There are a lot of steps that don't clearly explain what to do. But if you have experience with a PC command prompt or a technical background in computers, you'll probably be able to get through this without too many problems. The last thing you need to do to boot up Comfy UI is to open a terminal or CMD to get the command prompt window. Don't use PowerShell. We need to open the regular command prompt window and then you'll need to find that Visual Studio path. Open up this vcvr64.bat file from the command prompt and this will set up the necessary environment for OOT Diffusion run in Comfy UI. Then you have to make sure you went through all the previous setup installations properly and you can activate the Conda virtual environment for OT Diffusion. The next step is to kickstart the python main.py file and this will boot up your Comfy UI. But one thing I found is that you cannot use the portable versions of Comfy UI. 
you have to use the GitHub clone version instead. That means you need to clone the entire Comfy UI GitHub project into a folder without using the portable version because you have to create a Conda virtual environment within your computer's setup. This is related to the Comfy UI Conda environment for running the CUDA toolkit and the NVIDIA library, which you need to get everything working in Comfy UI properly. So let's get started with the first step. In the Visual Studio 2022 version, I have the community edition here. Scroll down to the .NET and multiple platform development section. Now you can see the Windows SDK options with Windows 11, Windows 10, and different dated versions of each SDK. Select the latest one available. Since my Windows is Windows 10, I'll select the latest Windows 10 SDK and it will start installing. After installing the Windows SDK, you come to the command prompt like what the author instructed and create a Conda environment. Once we have the Conda environment activated, you have to go to your Comfy UI folder and install the dependencies for Comfy UI here. I'm not using the portable version of Comfy UI, but rather the folder from the cloned GitHub project. Again, I have also cloned the OAuth Diffusion folder, the GitHub project, into my custom nodes folder. Lastly, you have to install the necessary library files for your Comfy UI setup. I did run into one error with the CUDA library, so I had to uninstall the PyTorch 2.2 version and then reinstall it using the command prompt mentioned in the official Comfy UI GitHub project page. This is one of the most common troubleshooting steps using pip to uninstall and reinstall a different version of the PyTorch library. That process will take a little while. After that, you can try booting up Comfy UI using the python main.py command and it should start up properly. Let me show you the history of the commands in this prompt. It installed everything at this stage. It looks like everything is okay with no errors. So I successfully installed PyTorch and then I can kickstart Comfy UI and it showed me that my graphics card is detected and everything started up fine. But before that, I forgot to install the requirements.txt, all those dependency components. So I had to go back and install those dependencies again. Then I started the Comfy UI main Python file and it successfully kicked off. You can check in your command prompt if the OOT Diffusion custom nodes are able to load or if there's an error message. If there's no error, that means you've successfully installed OOT Diffusion in your Comfy UI. In the Comfy UI page, you can right click and see the OOT Diffusion items in the menu. Let's start a fresh workflow using these OOT Diffusion nodes. You can get the workflow from the OOT Diffusion GitHub page. It's a very simple workflow. You don't have to ask me where to find it or how to get it. Just go to this project page and there's a link to download the workflow JSON file. Download that and drag the JSON into your Comfy UI interface. The first time it runs, it will download all the complex subfolders and files for OT Diffusion into your local Comfy UI drive. There's a lot to download initially, so wait a while and you'll see your image results. The first image output looks a bit awkward from certain angles. Let me change to a different example image. Like this dancer wearing a green t-shirt. But as you can see, the output isn't exactly the same green t-shirt from the reference. I can generate it again, but it's still not the same. So there's something you have to be aware of when using a diffusion. You need to use a very similar model pose and angle to the reference clothing image you want it to generate. For example, I use this cheerleader demo image and it can generate that outfit naturally. But look at the bottom of the dress. It looks torn or broken in pieces. That sometimes happens with this diffusion model because it's automatically masking and editing the model's image. And look at this one. Um, the model is at the 45 degree side angle like this. It cannot generate and change the t-shirt on the model's pose perfectly. 
For example, with this model standing in a side profile view like this, let's try one more dress example so you can understand what's happening. Basically, if you use a model image that isn't facing straight forward to the camera, like this one with a side view angle, it will generate some weird artifacts when trying to edit and apply the clothing image. It cannot generate and fit the clothing perfectly onto the body pose. This next example looks better because the model is standing straight on, facing forward. This type of frontal pose works well. For example, this colorful dress output looks good because it has a similar basic shape to the original clothing on the AI model. You can choose upper body, lower body, or a dress option. For example, when you load the diffusion model from the hub, you can also choose the full body option. There are different choices you can test with various clothing styles. For instance, here I have a t-shirt but the original model image is wearing a dress. You'll see it looks a bit awkward. This dog t-shirt isn't going to generate perfectly on this model's pose because the woman is wearing a dress and it cannot mask the image flawlessly to apply the t-shirt. Some parts look odd, especially around the hips and lower body area. That part won't show the t-shirt fitting perfectly over the dress outline. However, if you use another model like this one, wearing a tank top and jeans, the AI can better mask the upper body and apply the dog t-shirt more naturally and with better performance. So yeah, that highlights some pros and cons of this diffusion model. Like with this image, this dog t-shirt, and a few of these model images are using examples from the diffusion models demo. As you can see, you're not going to get a perfect output on the first attempt. You have to generate it a few times to get a good t-shirt fit on the model. Even then, some details may not blend seamlessly with the t-shirt graphic. Let's try this same image and t-shirt using the IP adapter workflow that I covered before. One thing I like to do is manually mask the subject better than just relying on the diffusion model's automatic masking. Let me fast forward through the loading process. There we go, we have our result. In the first sampling group, we have four images. As I mentioned before, I like to generate four at a time to see which one performs best and I'll pick that output. You can see it blends in nicely using IP adapter to apply the clothing looks quite natural for the t-shirt shape and how it conforms to the body. The second group starts adding more detail. You can see the dog graphic on the t-shirt is much clearer now. A few samples in this set are doing really well with the AI image generation. Let's try a dress example next, like this blue dress. One good thing about IP adapter is that I can manually mask the area I want. In this case, while some examples here don't have the dress fitting perfectly, I got a good one like this where the dress conforms nicely to the model's pose. You can evaluate which method you prefer to use for your e-commerce product modeling, photo editing, or whatever your use case may be. There's not always one definitive way, and even using the OOT diffusion model doesn't always generate perfect results. Most of the demo images they show feature very straightforward forward-facing poses. It can't handle more dynamic angles like a seated pose or side view as well. So yeah, you'll have to evaluate beforehand which technique performs best for your specific clothing items and intended output. That's it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, future thinker Benji With a screen of glow Crafting stories in the digital undertow Pixels dance at the flick of your command Bringing to life the vision so grand Future thinker Benji Teach us the ways